All right, so in today's video, we're gonna talk about the stock winterization and some aftermarket winterization that I've done on this three liter Duramax to help better perform in subarctic conditions of about negative 30 to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And then later in the video, I'll kind of talk about my experience towing our 24 foot enclosed trailer for about eight hours. The gross on this trailer is about 9,900 pounds, so about 10,000 pounds with a dry weight of about 3,200 and how this light duty truck with the three liter Duramax performed. So let's get after it. All right, so for the first stock winterization for this truck is gonna be the block heater and it's located right here along the driver's side fog lamp. And the truck comes with a cord uh, with a special adapter at the end. This will plug right into this inlet right here and it provides heat to your block. This cord is also winterproof. And what I mean by that is the cord is remains flexible despite cold temperatures. So, so your standard extension cord becomes rock solid when the temperatures drop below negative 20, but this cord in particular stays flexible, which allows greater longevity of the cord. And I think is really neat uh, coming from GM. All right, so for the next stock winterization, and you can actually peek my new SMB air intake that I installed last week, but what I wanna talk about is the ceramic plugs that come with this three liter Duramax and how amazing they actually are in the cold weather. So this truck has experienced upwards of negative 45 degrees outside. And when I was able to hop into the truck and it was able to fire up in about three to five seconds, it didn't wait long before those glow plugs actually warmed up and fired the engine. And for your standard diesel, it's gonna take upwards of 10 to 15 seconds for those glow plugs to warm up. But with the ceramic plugs this engine has, you don't experience those issues. And that's another great feature I love about this three liter Duramax is those ceramic plugs. All right, and for the third and final stock winterization for this truck, I'm gonna to move to the back of the truck. For the third and final stock winterization for this truck is going to be the heated def tank and heated lines that this truck comes with from factory. And this was a great feature last week when we traveled from Anchorage where it was positive 20 degrees to Fairbanks where it was about negative 15 once we arrived. And def's freezing point is actually 12 degrees Fahrenheit. So with those heated lines and heated def tank, it helped prevent the truck from going into limp mode. All right, so now we're gonna to transition to some of the aftermarket winterization that I've done on this truck and be a good segue into our aftermarket winterization that I've done on the truck. But let's go ahead and move in between the grill here. And what you're looking at is going to be the active shutters that come on these light duty trucks. And these remain closed when the truck is warming up. And as the truck moves to operating temperature, these will actually open and allow more air into the engine. And one thing I was testing for my first aftermarket winterization was actually a grill cover that I had mounted to the front of the truck. And quite honestly, it didn't make much of a huge difference when it came to the truck maintaining temperature inside the cab. Uh, so I actually removed it because I do absolutely love this front end on the truck. So that is my first aftermarket winterization that I did on the truck. And honestly, for $200 for that grill cover, it didn't really make a huge difference because those active shutters work so well from factory. And that's going to be coming standard on all light duty trucks. Your heavy duty models do not come with the active shutters from my understanding. So you definitely want to get a grill cover for your heavy duty truck if you had that 6.6 .6 liter Duramax. But for the 3 liter Duramax, it does come with those active shutters. It can kind of control how much air is getting into your engine and allows your engine to warm up much quicker with those active shutters. All right, and for the final winterization that I've done on this truck is actually going to be just below the stock block heater is going to be this cord right here. And this is for a three-way splitter that I have going from my oil pan. And I'll show some B-roll here, but I have an oil pan heater and then a transmission heater for when this truck is actually sitting outside for an extended period of time. It'll keep my engine oil and my transmission oil actually warm. So the truck warms up much quicker and puts less stress on both the engine and transmission. So let's transition a week prior to talk about how this 3-liter Duramax performed towing our trailer. All right, so we're now just south of Cantwell, about 150 miles into our road trip from Anchorage to Fairbanks along the George Parks Highway. The truck's doing great. Um, it's pulling this 24-foot Spartan trailer, which uh, right now the truck is with a transmission temperature of about 160 degrees Fahrenheit. I'd say about a quarter worth of our def tank and averaging of about 12 miles per gallon. Ambient temperature right now is about 15 degrees Fahrenheit for the truck. Uh, and we're pulling about 4,000 pounds. Uh, the trailer is basically empty, so we're just pulling the dry weight on it. Uh, but the truck is performing phenomenally. On the way down, we were averaging about 23 miles per gallon, which is usual for the cold weather uh, because in the summer we average about 27, 28 miles per gallon on the same trip when it's warm but because it's cold we're losing about 
four miles per gallon versus when it's warm. So with our current gas mileage at 12 miles per gallon, that is about average and as expected for this kind of weight. So pretty excited to see the results, but really happy with how this truck is pulling this weight. All right, so let's take a quick look here at the dash. It looks like I averaged about 12.6 miles per gallon over the course of 319 miles. And then we use just below a half tank of def, which means I can get about 600 and I'd say 50-ish miles on a tank of def pulling this trailer. Uh, looking at our transmission temperature, I averaged between 160 degrees Fahrenheit and 180 degrees Fahrenheit with the upgraded PPE transmission cooler that I installed in the previous videos. Overall, really happy with how this truck performed with this trailer, but again, disappointed with the amount of def consumption when towing a trailer. And just something to consider if you do own this truck and plan to tow. But overall, I've been extremely happy with this three liter Duramax. And when I think of a cold weather diesel, this is exactly what I expect expect from a diesel engine. But I wanna talk about one of the minor issues I was experiencing with this truck early on, and that's gonna be with the block heater. As a reference, I'm gonna use bulletin number 21-NA-096. And essentially what that is, is going to be Silverado's with a three liter Duramax diesel may have engine cooling fans running continuously for an extended period of time. And what I experienced was I plugged in my block heater at about negative five degrees Fahrenheit and, and waited about three to four hours before I used my truck. But when I came out, to run my truck, the fans for the engine were at 100% and the fans would not slow down. So essentially an engine calibration for the ECM will falsely set a intake air temperature code of DTC P0111. And as a result, the cooling system will go into remedial action and turn on the cooling fans at 100%. And this remedial action will actually continue until the engine goes into a what's considered a six hour cold soak. Some of the symptoms you'll have is obviously your fans at 100%, but you'll also have an engine light appear on your dash. I did not have the engine light on my dash, but my fans were at 100%. And then you'll have a various list of engine codes if you use an OBD sensor. And I'll put those on the screen here. So if you're experiencing Experiencing your fans at 100% because no one has time for a six hour cold soak. The easiest way to resolve this issue is to use your OBD sensor and clear your codes. And this will bring the engine fans down to normal operating speeds. And a way that I've started to prevent this in the future is not to plug my block heater in until temperatures reach about negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, since then, I have not experienced this issue before, but it's something to consider because the user manual recommends zero degrees. But from my experience, if I use it anything warmer than negative five, the sensor will trip and your fans will be at 100%. So just something to consider if you do own this three liter Duramax in the cold is to not plug your engine block heater in until temperatures are about that negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit. But like I said, I've been extremely happy with this 3-liter Duramax here in Alaska with operating temperatures exceeding that negative 20 to negative 30 threshold. And this truck absolutely performs and I've been extremely happy with the truck thus far. Um, but that's a wrap for the today's video. I'm going to get back over to my lot over here and remove the snow. Uh, and in the next one, we're going to talk about the rust that I found underneath the truck. And then we're also going to install PPE's rear differential cover. But thank you all for watching. Please leave your thoughts and comments down below and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.